because you had so much information on the paedophile rings right from the top told you we've been told you don't go through with this yeah well well what happened with me was uh, um I, I, I'll, t- I'll just give you a quick example to bolster up what I said. I, I took a I took a case one day to court, and it was a guy. Um, and this sort of conflicts with with what I said last time about the the copper who got convicted. And um, this was a guy that had been downloading child porn, and we went to court, and I'd graded these images one to five, and I'd undergraded some of them because they were children from the Far East, and they got less body fat, so you can't really determine their ages. So a 15-year-old Filipino girl might actually look eight years old, you know. So anyway, so the solicitor thought that they had an inner to get the case thrown out, saying that I was bad at decision-making. Anyway, one of the images involved uh, a little kid, a tiny little, I don't know how old, but it was an infant, um, on, on an altar. And I don't know whether it was staged or it actually was an altar, altar with a priest raping her, raping this little baby, really, you know, an infant child. And... Um, this this solicitor had made this complaint about getting this case thrown out and then sort of criticising my ability to, to grade these images and said to the judge, no, we want this these images written off his indictment. And the judge said, well, it, well if you, you, you're arguing Mr Wedge's credibility, then I've got to look at all the images. And they didn't want that, but he said, no, if you carry on arguing, this is what we're going to do. Arrogant tossers, that they said, yeah, we'll go ahead with that. So the, the judge said, officer can you bring me the laptop so I brought the laptop and they were all in thumbnails and he said just scroll down at a speed so I can look through and he's scrolling down and you could sort of make out what was going on with a lot of them and then all of a sudden he'd picked out this same image that horrified me with this priest and he went stop he said what's that enlarge it so I pinged it up enlarge on the screen he went my god is, is that staged I went w- we don't know we don't know. I mean, you could try and identify the location by plug sockets and things like that, what part of the world it was, but this one, it was too many, there were thousands of them, we, we couldn't do it all. And he went, and he downloaded that. I said, well, he didn't just download it, he exported it, so he made the image. And he'd actually put a comment on this guy, and we proved it was him. And the comment was, she loves it, she's really getting it, this one. And this judge was horrified, he'd never seen something so perverse in his life, and I genuinely believe he hadn't. And with that, he leans over and he picks up this pot of pens and he stands up and he just chucks it straight across the court and it smashes on the glass where the, where the defendant's standing and he went, get that bastard out of my court. And he gave him 10 years. It got reduced on appeal. But, you know, you can see that this was a civilian was all of a sudden put in that environment. Uh-huh. And I say this to people, you know, they're going about child abuse, oh, they, you know, they'll get over it with therapy. Well, I'll tell you what, show a child porn video and I tell you what, there wouldn't be a person, a sane, decent individual in this country that wouldn't hang him, wouldn't want hanging brought back, mm-hmm. you know. But moving on to your, your last... See, I think they should bring hanging back. I, I, think, I know in America they, they have um, the chemically for their, their... But it doesn't take their thought process yeah. away, you know. I mean, they've tried it uh, in the Scandinavian countries, but the, the, the mind's still there. Yeah. It's what they call the men's real. How, they say one in every 30, John, has got paedophile tendencies, which is one in every street. Well, there was um, a profiler, a sex offender profiler, said that victims, we're looking at 30% of the population of victims. Uh-huh. So, you know, that the people it affects... 30%. Now, if it affects directly 30%, indirectly, it's going to affect their partners, uh-huh. their family and everything. It affects everyone, yeah. you know. See the paedophile rings and paedophiles, when they go to prison, they end up getting a community. They end up befriending each other. And is there not a way we should put them into segregation units and keep them fucking away from everybody and anybody? Yeah. Lock them in, put them in a fucking tomb, just leave them there. Uh- Obviously, they've got their their health and safeties and all that shit, but that shouldn't really matter. They should be kept away, solitary confinement, until they get out for their sentence. And and they shouldn't be a priority. The victims should be the priority. Yeah. The money should be on the victims, not on them. You know, and, and they knew that they were a risk, right? So if we look at the severity of crime, you know, there's nothing more on, on the indictment books than murder. It's section one of common law, murder. Um, but, but murders don't need to be segregated in prison, right? But paedophiles do. And now, uh, when they brought in what they call penitentiaries, which were penal reform places, right? I think Pentonville Prison was the first one. And this is where they knew that, that sex offenders against children were such a risk that they had to segregate them. But back then, they used to have to put on that these persons were not on normal circulatory exercise 
N-O-N-C-E, nonce, that's where it comes from. They knew even back there in the 1800s they were a problem. There is not one culture on this planet that allows that. Even indigenous cultures, they did a thing in Papua New Guinea. Now, age of consent varies because, you know, people grow up quicker in different parts of the world and they've got different attitudes to things. But, you know, you take indigenous cultures, which they're illiterate, you know, they've not been educated and, and they're, they're devoid of structured religion, you know. Uh, they they followed this group and they said that anyone who hurts a child, a young, what we consider a young child, they're banished by the elders into the jungle. They've got to go as far away as they can for two years. If they survive on their own, which is highly unlikely, they're allowed back in, but they are they are treated down at the level of a dog. So even in these cultures, it is wrong. So when we look at that, and I want to get back to the question you did ask me, I don't want to keep jumping a gun, but when we look at that, then we look at, well, what about our culture? When we look at a group called PIE, P-I-E, Pedophile Information Exchange, was set up in the 70s, they wanted sex with boys to be lowered to 10 years old. They were backed by Margaret Hodge, right, um, MP, right, Honourable, Patricia Hewitt, the longest serving female MP, right, and Harriet Harman, right, all backed them. And they ran a group, these three MPs, called the NCCL, the National Campaign for Civil Liberties. Harriet Harman herself wanted uh, the age of consent for girls lower to 14, right? So we're, we're, we're looking at these indigenous cultures. Look at our culture with the backing of people that all went on to positions of privilege. And I think, I think it was Tony Blair appointed um, Patricia Hewitt as Minister for Children, Children's Minister. And she, she was backing Pi, and they were even allowed, allowed Pi to give a talk at their, um, their end-of-year seminar in the, the London School of Economics. The age of consent in the UK, seen in the 1800s, I believe it was 12 years old. I think it was 12, 1880s. I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm sure I read that somewhere. It used to be 12. Yeah, it can be in... But people died at 40 back then. Yeah, you know? I think, though... Do you think people still have those tendencies because of the natures in the 1800s? Because things can pass down from generation to generation in your genes as well. So like you say there, some consent uh, ages are as young as eight and nine for some countries to get married to kids. Yeah, well, well, uh, yeah, of course, and that's what I'm saying. It varies. It yeah. does vary. But there's that book that I brought. Um, it's called Poison Bowl, mm -hmm. and and it's about the um, sodomy and the beatings within our public schools and how it was just a given that that's what happened. And it was endemic in our culture. And, and you know, you're taking um, kids from the lower classes end up in the care system where they're, ju they're just preyed on by these wolves, these paedophiles. And, but then you got, get the upper echelons, they put their kids into what they call the public school system. It's only called public school because it's private, mm -hmm but the public have to gain exits under the Public School Reform Act in the 1800s or whatever. So schools like Eton, Winchester uh, and Radley and, all, and Harrow and all these places, I mean, kids are putting in there, there from, from infant age, you know, ages of four, junior school age, you know, boarded all the way up until they leave, yeah. you know, in male environments where, where, where sodomy and this, what they call the fagging system, where the older boys have got the governance for the younger boys and, and sexual punishments and everything is rife. What's that going to do to their minds? Yeah.